So Mitch, surprisingly, the last time we saw Warpless for Super Mario Brothers 3 at a mainline GDQ was AGDQ 2015. Probably the most competitive, you know, you know, uh, massive category in SMB3. So Mitch, I'm curious, what are the major changes that have happened since last time we saw this? We always got to worry about the hands. Uh, don't forget, anyone out there, you're still going to see the hands tonight. They're still going to screw over my run. But one of the biggest things to note that I'm going to be trying to demonstrate during uh, this performance is something called early hammer manipulation. Hello everyone, I am Mitch Flowerpower and I'm gonna be running Super Mario Brothers 3. On comms, we have the Haxer. How's it going, Haxer? Hey, doing well, man. How you feeling uh, about this one? Uh, I'm feeling uh, pretty good, except there's gonna be one really stressful thing that I'm gonna do at the beginning of my run. So I've actually been given a couple minutes to kind of talk about what exactly I'm gonna be doing and it's called early hammer manipulation. And I'm essentially gonna leave the Haxer to talk about like the nitty gritty of it, but essentially I'm gonna give you like the slow little rundown of what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be kind of changing up how I do world one and a little bit of world two. And what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna start at a very specific time and I'm gonna do everything I can in the upcoming levels until world two to remove all the lag frames. So I'm gonna play levels in ways that you probably have not seen done in a speed run before. And uh, when I get to world two, I'm gonna time exiting the levels as perfect as I possibly can to try and manipulate the Hammer Brother movements to give me the early hammer. It probably has like a 1% chance in a marathon setting, but I mean, this is how I grind and this is actually in the world record. So being at home, I'm able to do this at a live event. I would not be able to do this. So I figured, you know what? Let's try it out. It's going to be insane. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully you can get one. That'd be uh, incredible. Uh, yeah, that, that would be really cool. So one thing one thing to note that if, if I get any extra lag frames in certain levels or anything goes wrong with my score or anything, I'm sorry and I feel really bad, but I can't do it. It's extremely precise. And when you're doing normal runs, you can just reset and try again. But here I can't. So odds are we won't see it, but I am going to try. So I am ready when you guys are. Unfortunately, I cannot give you a three, two, one go because of the thing that I wait for. So I'm going to, I'm going to just say go. <laughs> are you guys okay with that? Works for me. All right. As long as you guys are okay with that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and reset and then we have to wait for a special time in the RNG cycle. And then once I start, Haxer is going to take over. He's going to explain things while I kind of focus a bit. Okay. So I just did my reset. So now I have to wait for a certain time here. We're waiting. We're waiting. Ooh, it's happening. It's getting closer. <laughs> getting nervous. Okay, so I'm about to say go. All right, 11,000, 12,000, and go. All right, so All right, it, here we go. Yeah, it was important for him to get synced up with his tool there um, in order for this entire thing to work. So um, you're going to notice, normally you're used to seeing Mario players play these levels as fast as they possibly can. You're going to see him play these a little strange here. Um, so that probably looked a little weird. Wasn't probably as fast as he could have done that there. And that's intentional. He had briefly, <laughs> yeah, he briefly had mentioned lag frames. And so just to give you an idea of what those are. So... If you think of a frame, and we'll just simplify things and say the console runs at 60 frames per second. So there's 60 frames in a second. And frames are basically like checks where advancement and, and things in the game can occur. So when you get a lag frame in Mario 3, one advancement that doesn't occur is the Hammer Bro RNG. So what happens then is it gets desynced from his tool if he's getting lag frames that his tool doesn't expect. So he's going to get way different bro RNG if he doesn't play the levels these way, this way because it's very important for him to play this way in order to get the early hammer like he wants. So um, that's why uh, he's, he's really trying to focus on this first part of the run because a lot of these levels have these small little changes that... Yeah, that, uh, you know, take up a lot of his, uh, um, you know, attention. So we're going to see some here too as well. Like normally he wouldn't stop there on the hill. But again, there's so many sprites on the screen there that normally he would generate lag. And he doesn't want to do that. He wants to have the exact same situation as the tool he's following. So um, yeah, that was, that looked pretty good there as far as I could tell. So we're moving yeah, along through World 1. Yeah, you can tell if the bottom... Yeah, you can tell if the bottom beetle is still down there when you start to run and build speed that you didn't cause any lag. Yep. 
And then 1-6 is a, a nice classic level here. Uh, one of the few levels where he's not going to get a ton of P-Speed um, until this one particular point and um, gets it right there. And of course, you know, looks really scary that jump, but uh, Mitch is a professional, so no issue there for him. All right, Getting... this is where it starts to get really intense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one thing that's really important for Mitch is uh, he's got to pay attention to his score. Um, going into World 2. So Mario 3 is great in that he can randomly generate lag frames both entering and exiting levels based on the addition of the his score, basically, the, the digits of his score. So in the first level here, he's trying to get a score under a certain value to not generate those lag frames, because as I mentioned, again, the Hammer Bro RNG doesn't advance on those frames as it normally would if, it, if the lag occurs. So in order to stay synced with his tool, he needs to uh, focus on exiting 2-1 with, with a threshold under 29. So if you add all the digits in his score, <laughs> it should be under 29 by the time he leaves that first level. I think level. I just made an unfortunate mistake. Oh, you bounced I off think. the key? <laughs> I noticed that. No, 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 no. No, I think I pressed A late, so I'm going to get a different boss panel, so I'm going to get a different time. Oh, okay. So I'm going to get a different score. We'll see. I'll try and fight him normally. Hopefully, hopefully it's not too bad. We'll see. What? Oh, no. Okay, okay, okay. So 240. Hold on. I have to do like a lot of... Okay, so I need to end with a score of 7781 and I have 7756. So what am I, what am I behind by? 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm behind by 250 points, yep. right? Yep, 250. Okay, so if I stomp on that Goomba, that's one. That's one. Okay, so I have to get three, three. Oh my gosh. Okay, I have to get 300 extra points here. That's if I make it to the overworld. And we're gonna be trying to be quiet as he enters and exits these levels here too. Oh, I can't make it. I can't do it. No, sorry. Oh no. Okay. I know I can't I can't make it. It's okay. So we're gonna we didn't get we can't we can't do it unfortunately. Yeah, so unfortunately his we're his point total didn't with Yeah. Normal. Okay, okay, sounds good. Yeah, unfortunately yeah. his point total didn't line up there. Um it's really important for as I mentioned when he exits this level in the next two, so um it happens. I mean that happens all the time when he's doing regular attempts too, where you know, he sometimes misses a Goomba stomp that he needs and things like that. So um, yeah, dude, it's it's really high precise, but I mean, it's just a it's just something that happens. It could be anything, entering, exiting levels, life frames, all that stuff. But we tried it. Yep. We tried yep. it. It's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. But that means he he gets to go for the uh, the sweaty two four in this case, <laughs> trying to get the early piece. Oh yeah, here. that's right. Yep. Here we go. All right, um, Hammer brother in my way. That's normal. So yeah, this is a, a pretty particular P-Speed there. As you can see, he barely had enough space in order to build that. That's going to be a theme in Mario 3, is trying to maximize your um, running on the platforms in order to build the P-Meter, and trying to keep that P-Meter throughout the level for as long as possible. So um, that very simple concept you're going to see in a lot of levels. There's some levels where you jump in particular spots once the arrows build to a certain point to continue to build it later. So just understanding P speed and how it works is is, is a really important part of this run. <laughs> Everyone give him and, one more try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you get early music box, so very nice. You know, yeah. the bro you didn't want. So that's the, <laughs> the cold heart truth of Mario 3 right there. I didn't want to fight that hammer brother, but as you can see, he is in my way, and I don't have a choice. And yes, that's Mario 3. Yeah. But so far, this run is really good. I'm playing really well. I like it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we knew that was a music box for a few different reasons. First of all, the hammer can't be there without a very, very special movement, which he was trying to do. Um, also, the music box, after moving, will face right in this world, whereas the hammer will face left. So we use this information to tell us which Hammer Bro has which items. And this is used throughout the entire run because you want to only fight the Hammer Bros that have the items that allow you to save time. Yep, exactly. And uh, if you fight a Hammer Brother, it's normally going to cost you. And it's 
It's really weird because it depends on what world and what kind of hammer brother, but essentially you'll lose about 10 seconds or so. Whoa, per hammer brother. <laughs> I haven't done this level in a long time. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's true. All right. Yeah. Yeah, normally with the early hammer manipulation, he doesn't play this level or the previous level or yeah, the next I don't play level. Yeah, these levels at all. So, um, and yeah, he gets to play two four here. Yeah, this is looking looking pretty nice with the movements. And two four is a deceptively difficult level, I would say. That opening jump can be a little tricky there, oh. as you can see. He does that that duck jump in order to give him a little extra space in order to make it. So, let me just pretty nice level. Let me just remind everyone that. Not getting early hammer means more GDQ and more Mario 3, so it's kind of a good thing that happened. <laughs> yeah, and you can still have a great run, you know? So it doesn't really affect the way you're going to play the rest of the game anyway, so... Um, but yeah, we're going to move into the pyramid here. Um, this level's pretty notorious because of how technical it is to execute. Um, it's probably going to look fairly obvious why that is, so he's got to build the P-Speed there, use the Buzzy Beetle in order to break these barriers, and he's trying to do that while maintaining P-Speed, so the duck slides under these are really important. And he has a very beautiful level there, exiting with a 284, which is exactly what you want to see. That was a very good world. Yeah, absolutely. First first, okay. first two worlds Mine were... Minus the extra hammer, brother. Yeah. Which... So that, we... is, that is the weird weird reality of Mario 3. If you were watching somebody um, who was really low on the leaderboard do a world like this, and as you saw, most of the levels went really well. I mean, how could you really go fast? Or right. faster, I guess. And then you would assume, okay, so he's going to save time in the split. He really didn't make any mistakes. And then you would actually see on my splits, I'd be like plus seven, right? And that's the extra hammer, brothers. So Mario yep. 3 is in a lot more control. He has an opportunity later in the run to potentially make that up with the extra bro, but it's going to, you know, be dependent on more hammer bro RNG. That's going to be kind of the theme here for the the first, you know, probably 40 some minutes of the run. So, um, but yeah, the, now that he's entered the airship here, uh, the boss patterns in these worlds are actually determined by the time it takes Mitch to exit the last level to when he enters the pipe on this airship. So based on the movement he got from the hammer bro, he actually is aware of exactly what this boss is going to do here and can prepare for it in advance of the fight. So this is how you know and and you know can prepare for these boss fights, and it's gonna be consistent throughout the worlds from this point. AKA Mario 3 is complicated. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, got got a nice, uh, interesting pattern there. I don't think he was supposed to do that, but <laughs> leave it the world too. Right, good run. Um, All right, so there's something really important that I need everyone watching GDQ to do. Okay, what what we're gonna do is at 13 minutes, at exactly 13 minutes, I want everyone to donate $13. I'm gonna see the biggest $13 donation trade, one dollar for every year that Mike's been with GDQ. One dollar for every year that Mike has been with GDQ. We can do it. The biggest $13 train we've ever done. Let's do it. And that's coming up soon. Three minutes, guys. Yeah, focus on that three minutes. You gotta do the train. Um, moving on to World 3 here, uh, there are a couple fairly difficult strats we're gonna see in the next level here. Um, for, for Mitch, obviously, he's, he's used to doing it, so it's not, not too big of a deal, but it's he gets a nice... It, it is, it is. But he gets a nice breather to start the world. You know, 3 one's one of the easiest levels in the run, so just a very nice, relaxing start to World 3 here. And then <laughs> we get to move on. All right, that's the, a good movement. Yep. And so he actually delays there in order to use that moving uh, wood elevator platform in order to build the P-Speed that he needs. I, I don't know how that worked. Usually you take damage, but right. it, it did. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> Dude, it's for the GDQ! I should have taken damage there. It's yep. for the 13 train. <laughs> I want everyone to do it. So the bros are okay. looking good here. Um, the one on the right, you're always worried about that ru that bro running off screen. And since he's all the way down on the screen here, I think I think you're s you're technically not safe. I guess technically, he could do four very specific movements in a row. 
but that's he not going to He needs to do exact movements to screw me over right now. Yep. He needs to do exact movements. So he needs to be How able to fight. How many people out there thought oh, Mario 3 was this complicated? <laughs> Super complicated. So yeah, he uh, he needs to fight both these bros or skip both of them. So um, ideally, he wants to fight them, and it's setting up pretty good for that. But we'll we'll see. They the world three bros are unpredictable. You, they have minds of their own. You're pretending like you're pretending like I'm not gonna get a movement of four right here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was <laughs> like, it's about to happen. Which drastically increase my. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look at this. It's exactly look. He's he's just working his way up there. Oh come on! And I've already fought this bro, right? So I, I yep. don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I have to do here. Come on, move go down. down. There. Yes. Okay. We're good. Okay. All right. That's actually best case. Ooh, double bottom pattern. Perfect. So what's weird about this Hammer Brother battle is being on a water tile puts water in the battle, and if there's water in the battle, the Hammer Brothers float. Hold on. Okay, we're good. So the Hammer Brothers float in the water, causing the chest to appear later. So a water battle is uh, time loss, unfortunately. Wow, yep. really? Mario 3 RNG? Yeah. <laughs> and if, <laughs> if you realize? get an upper upper battle in a water fight, it's a big time loss. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, if you get two patterns, of them... Upper, upper patterns, water yep. patterns, yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, for most people, it's like, oh, it's a small amount of time. Well, Mitch's run is very optimized at this point. So these little things tend to make a pretty big difference over the course of a run. So it basically... Anyone who's been watching anyone who's been watching Mario 3 for like five years, they're like, please. He resets that Runaway Bro like six years ago. <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> Not that optimized right now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so... We did it! We had, we're at 13 minutes and 25 seconds. Everyone in chat. Gotta get the 13s. I want 13s. to see the biggest 13. $13 train. $1 for every year that Mike's been with GDQ. Shout out to Mike. So 3-9, we've got a nice uh, nice strat here called the H-Jump. Makes it over the small H there. Woo! Very important strat. World, world 3. It's like, there's two things you worry about in World 3. Right, Mitch? What are they? Yep. 3-2 and 3-9. Yep. And Runaway Bro. There's three. Yeah, bros. yeah, three. <laughs> technically, usually you're just like, oh, Runaway Bro, let me just slap the console and we're getting a fresh run. <laughs> so. Look at that train. Good job, everyone. That is crazy. Let's keep it going. It's all for Mike. It's all for Mike. Without him, oh my God. Without that basement. And speaking Without of basement. donations, I think now is a great time. Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Pipe in. That is a great time. Perfect. We have some terrific donations here and also awesome job so far, Mitch. We have a five thousand dollar donation from our own Uranium Anchor. Uranium Anchor here, as another GDQ draws to a close, I just wanted to thank everyone who labored and continues to labor to make this amazing event possible time and time again. A lot has changed over the past few years, but we're able to keep these events consistently high quality, and they're always highlights of my year. I do find it amusing that Skybills is probably going to read this off during another Mitch run again, but things <laughs> do go in circles, it seems. Good luck to Mitch in the rest of this run, and I'll see you all at SGDQ. Stay comfy and game on. Do I have time for one more? Sure. Absolutely. All right, we, we have a $2,750 donation from Running With Speed. That is the documentary, yeah. Running With Speed. Hey, everyone. Team Running With Speed here with another donation made possible by everyone who purchased the documentary this week. The incomparable Mitch Flower Power is a huge part of our film, and we're on the edge of our seats for this grand finale run. If you haven't bought Running With Speed yet, now is the last day that $1 from every purchase will go to Prevent Cancer Foundation, so check it out now. Thank you so much. That was a big part for me and Mitch for a little while. Mitch very much enjoyed watching Ian that. That was amazing. That was amazing. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much, Sky. That was awesome. Of course, of course. So, back to Cringe Rose 3. <laughs> so we're moving. <laughs> but 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 we're we're moving into everybody's favorite world, Mitch. It's world four. Oh, Everybody world loves world so four. So nice with RNG. Yeah. So oh, nice. but you get to use your hammer now. Remember? I that. do. Did you know that this world is shaped like a turtle? When I come out of this pipe, look at it. It's shaped like a turtle. Look at that. There's the face. <laughs> Absolutely. And he's going for a 4 1 P speed strat here that um, he used to not do, but he's picked up over the last couple of years. You have to mention that every time, I, right? 
Well, it's a big change for you, I know, because you didn't it, like doing it. It was. It was a huge change. Very big change for me. So, uh, and he does Yo, it beautifully really now, by the way. Yeah, I really appreciate that you said that. It is a big change. Thank you. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It is actually I noticed. interesting because, yeah, <laughs> a lot of speedrunners do get stuck in like their own little niches, and it's so incredibly hard to break free and to like surpass yourself in uh, different areas. So. It's really hard when the run is 20 minutes in and you're trying to test out a new strat that you've been practicing, but you're on PV pace. How do you do that, right? It's, it's yep. very easy to kind of be like, nope, I'm going to... You revert back to your old strats. But anyways, Haxer's killing on comms. What else we got, Haxer? Ooh, we've got a great Moving level. Come on up here. This is, this is a, a very aesthetically pleasing level to watch. Um, so he's going to get this P-Speed at the top section and continue it through this basement here. And this looks very impressive. He just knows exactly where to jump. Going to use the ceiling bump there. Going to jump to this one tile and off of it. No big deal for Mitch, you know. He's he's a professional here. Yeah. Doesn't he doesn't make four three mistakes. Professionals I've don't do that. Been playing this game. Yeah, I've been playing for a couple minutes. Thirteen yeah. minutes actually. That's how long I've been playing for. <laughs> and this would have been bad bro RNG for him if he was if he had early hammer. But because he can use the hammer here, that cloud's not running away. He's chasing him down. So he does want to get that cloud. And the P-Wing coming over. So if that P-Wing moves down, which you guys need to be saying down in the chat, by the way. You want that P-Wing to move down. He can actually yeah, use... In chat right now, say down. Yep. Conjure up, the... control the RNG for me, please. Exactly. So if that bro moves down, he can use the screen transition to skip over it. And we have a potential for Boxus World 4. And Boxus is incredibly unlikely. Yep. <laughs> He's going to move down, but the other bro would be with him. Oh. Cool. Yep. Uh, this is good, though. At least you can skip him. So. And moving into 4 6 here, <clears throat> Mitch really doesn't like these piranha plants in this level. As you're going to see, he just doesn't want any of them to continue to, to live. I, I don't know why. He just just doesn't doesn't want them to be alive in this level for some reason. <laughs> but some yeah, of them actually generate down. lag. We all got unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> Every, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean. <laughs> oh, some of them actually generate lag too. So there is there is a point for him to uh, take out a lot of those enemies. So you'll see that throughout the run sometimes there that uh, you want to either you know fire kill an enemy or stomp them in order to reduce lag, and that's one of those cases. Yeah, I'm it's like very minor lag reduction. Yeah. Killing it though, this run is great. Oh, moving to two. So as so Haxer I was talking about earlier with boss yep. patterns, the fact that my hammer brother did a movement of two there, which means he walked on two tiles, as opposed to a movement of one, that means it took me longer by, you know, half a second, one movement of the hammer brother, uh, to get to the airship, which means the boss pattern is going to be different. If I had got a movement of one, the boss pattern would be different. But luckily, with a movement of one and a movement of two, it's more or less the same boss pattern. Slightly different. Not really. He jumps a little quicker. Time? That's it. Do we have time for some more donations? Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> we have two All minutes. Right, so <laughs> I want yeah, you we, know, got, we got like 20 minutes. I'll let you know. I had to uh, learn a song here for donations. So I'm going to do my best here. Right? Also, we hit the 2.6 mil, so let me start there. Thank you so much, chat. Appreciate Ooh. that. So I'm going to do my best here. Uh, here we go. Uh, we have a $50 donation from Egg McMuffin, who says, Rainbow Road, let's it go. <laughs> it's a me. Mario, <laughs> Mushroom Kingdom, Mamma Mia, take me home, Rainbow Road. That was beautiful. What's it that? was. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that was actually really good. Yeah. I just learned that song. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to find a recording of this. So yeah. Uh, let's do a couple more here because this is the World 4 airship here. Uh, yeah, ben Ritt donates $50 saying, MFP crew here cheering for you, Mitch. Let's get that wrong, Warfront. And Muffin Mark donates $50 saying, last donation of the marathon. Great job, everyone. Question for you all. Would you call the final level of each world the airboat level? The airboat level. The I've airboat never level. really heard anyone say that. The airboat <laughs> level. The airboat level. I mean, that's been like a meme this whole GDQ, right? So. 
mean, that part there is not even attached to the rest of the I ship, know. so I don't know what it is. How does this thing fly? <laughs> Please explain. <laughs> and where am I going here? In, into the, the pipe, just the, the, the abyss of the airship, I don't know. <laughs> Airboat. Yeah. The wooden airboat in the sky. <laughs> Where are all my fireballs going? I feel really bad for anyone below. That's. I'm getting judged by chat because I had to learn Country Road. I'll tell y'all something. It's 2.30 in the morning here. I listened I to that so y'all wouldn't get bad notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did great. That was fantastic. Uh... Goodness, so we have a real doozy of a stage here with 5-1, uh, don't we, Mitch? I saw you practicing this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> any, any head clippers? So uh, this is a pretty significant change in the warpless route over the past couple years. Uh, we tend to use the P... There are circumstances where we wouldn't P-wing this level, but we tend to now. And there's a secret item here, so we get a nice secret. A little secret exit. Oh, Skeet Creek! Skeet Creek! <laughs> so, uh... He's, he's getting the music box there, so now, if, if you're t keeping track of his inventory closely, which I know he is, he's got two music boxes now, and he's going to use one of them to skip these hammer bros here, but there's also one in the sky that he no longer needs because he's grabbed that music box. So, we really need your help to conjure up some movements from the sky bro to get him out of Mitch's way. And he doesn't yeah, like to get out of Mitch's is. way. Yeah, wherever he is, just say the direction away from me is where we need to go. That's, that's about it. Any, just, not, just not towards right the there, castle. Movement, horrible. Not hey, towards yes. the castle. Yeah, not towards the castle. <laughs> um, and as a result, he's going to have to re-grab his fire later in this world. So this used to be a level we had fire flower in, and we could use fire strats in. So you lose a little bit of time in this level, but he saved a little bit of time in the previous two levels. And it's allowing him to skip an additional hammer bro, potentially. You know, if the sky bro cooperates. So it's 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 way more time save. Hexer, can you please tell Chet that I am not affiliated with the sky bro in any way? I didn't do it, I swear. Uh, <laughs> sky Bills doesn't like the sky bro either. Just just throwing it out there. Nobody likes Nobody the sky likes bro. Five. Ah, nope. uh, no, incoming, no emote. <laughs> that, one, that one person, I like World 5. <laughs> no, you don't. Just like, I gotta know her, I like World 5. <laughs> no, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't, sit down. So, a little bit of trivia for the chat here. This is not actually considered a level. This is an extended pipe transition. So Yes, that is correct. If you were able to skip this in, let's say, the 100% category, you could do that because it's a pipe transition. However, there's no way to do it, unfortunately. Unless you're well, playing randomizer. I mean, anyone who skips it, I'll give you a thousand bucks. I don't care. <laughs> if you find a skip for this, you, you call me absolutely. right now. Yeah, absolutely. You can tell me about it. 5-4 um, here looks very scary, but a lot of these jumps line up really well with uh, either full jumps or small jumps. So, yeah. Uh, he, it, yeah. it really does. It's like an all all bark, no bite kind of level. Yeah, but it does lag in the one spot, and you'll see sometimes people miss an input there. This level, on the other hand, you know, tends to do what it, it just did everyone. there. Yep. So that, that P-Speed build in the beginning is very particular, and it could be like he, he turned back for one frame too long, and that was enough to make it so he couldn't build Peter. It's just... It's yeah. a very finicky yeah, build at that in that level, unfortunately. So this is good. We I have been in the... this situation so many times, and he <laughs> you always have. goes left left and down. Yep. We don't want that. He can go anywhere right now, this Hammer Brother. After this level, I need everyone to focus. After this level, he's right to my left. I need him to go down or far left. And you know what? You know what he's going to do? I know what and, he's going to do. And the odds are in your favor. That's the messed up part about this. Yeah, technically I have high rods and... Oh, oh he did! Nice! Let's go. Let's go, okay, so that's good. We skipped him. Now he can't come back, so... And if you didn't know, Hammer Brothers cannot cross uh, beaten levels, and Hammer Brothers cannot land on the same tile as me after I've beaten a level. So after I beat this level, he can't move right anymore. That's it. We avoided him. Let's go. That was you, Chad. You did that. You Thank did that. You, I, someone had to be lucky, right? If everyone yep. says it, at least one person. That's how 
what? That's how it works, right? That's the logic of randomness. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were due for that anyway. You know, I've seen how many in a row where he's just like, yeah, I'm going to move in front of you. Or to the castle. Uh, yeah, honestly, I think it's been at least the last five runs I got the World 5. He has not cooperated. We so yeah, World 5, what, once a day? So a week yep. of World 5s? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty about much. A about a week of World 5s? <laughs> So yeah, he just blasted through 5.8, by the way, which, uh, you know, is a very impressive level. Um, for him, it's, you know, no problem. But for the average person, just building P-Speed there and knowing exactly where to jump is really important. It's You have to get that duck at the end in order to avoid that lack of two, just to, to give that extra clearance. And, and these are the little things that, you know, you pick up when you run the game so much, and, and Mitch has been doing for a really long time. Yeah, so... Uh, to follow up on what Hacks said, like if uh, if you get P speed in that level, it's easy. But if you don't get P speed in that level, it's actually really hard. Yep. It's it's one yep. of the harder levels in the game because that that lack of two is just throwing stuff all over the place. Um, but we have time for another donation. Yeah, I recognize some of these names here from your community, Mitch. We have a twenty-five dollar right. donation from Teeks, who says, "Ooh, best of luck, Mitch. Lots of love and support from the Hammer Core crew and SMB3 community. We're rooting for you. Let's see some door three and boxless action." I, I don't know about the door three. Mitch kind of zoomed through that pretty quickly. Yeah. He kind of forgot about boxless, it. Though. Yeah. <laughs> he he normally oh, doesn't go for it. Yeah. <laughs> that, come on, I was yeah. trying to cover for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, I mean, I'm really meant to go for it. I lost track of which door I was in front of. Oh, my goodness. Uh, $25 from Kamaji, who says, Been waiting all week for my favorite streamer's run. Mitch is always so positive and has a great time with chat. Stoked to see him wreck Mario 3. And, of course, going with the no hands. We'll hope so. We'll, we'll all hope for no hands for Mitch. Yeah, we didn't get the early hammer, so no hands would be great to see. I'd love to see that at a GDQ. Yeah, game kind of says here. One more here for the road. No more country roads. Uh, Con Murray donates $130, saying 10 tickets for the $13 train. Thanks for everything you've done, Mike. Yo, yeah, shout out to the $13 train. Let's go. Yeah. Yo, the $13 yeah. train. Let's go. Absolutely. $1 for every year he's been with us. Man, Mike's awesome. I'm going to name a new trick when I find it in like 20 years. <laughs> I'll find a new trick in Mario 3. I'm going to name it after Mike. It would be like the Mike clip or something. <laughs> All right. So Hammer Bros, last world with Hammer Bros here. So Yay! if Mitch... <laughs> it, honestly, if you can escape this world without getting the star, this is pretty good. This is a pretty good run. Yeah. So And they switched there. That's good. Yeah. So it's, it's setting up nicely so far. Now, you don't want to, you know count your chickens before they hatch, right? Because that's the way World 6 is. This is the world where probably the most uh, ridiculous movements happen. So, um, But he's grabbing that star here and he's going to use that star in order to get an insta-kill on this boom-boom. We're going to get the upside-down orb and... Orb. orb. <laughs> We're on the same wave wavelength there. <laughs> Yeah, I heard like a ringing in my ear. <laughs> You're like, ah, it's coming. 6-4, um, there's a, a weird little P-Speed strat at the beginning here, and he gets it, which is very beautiful. Um, it's actually sub-pixel dependent there, so half of them work on jumping on one frame, and half of them work jumping on a different frame. So <laughs> you could do it correctly and just not get the P-Speed because sub-pixels, which we will get to shortly. What are subpixels? We'll get to that in this world. But for now, we're moving on to 6-5, which this is kind of... I, th I feel like this strat's pretty iconic for this game at this point. People are always asking, how do you do the 6-5 despawn? Well, you do it just like that. Yeah, isn't um, there supposed to be two there? Yeah, and it, it's, it, it's not as complicated as it looks. You just have to run in the bottom section there as quickly as possible and scroll the screen to, to the right. So you, you see these little jumps that Mitch did. He's trying to maintain as much speed as he possibly can there. And it looks like you're you're lucky here, right? This is, yeah, let's go. Yep, yeah, so, I'm in. I'm good. Hammer no Bros. No extra Hammer Brothers this run. Yeah, beautiful stuff. Um, the wall jump will counter <laughs> So this fort is way more technical, I think, than it actually looks. Uh, it's really hard to get 
a, a high in game time on this, which we're going to see from him here because he's having a great fort. But uh, it's very easy to lose three or four seconds in this fort by just like simply bumping a wall, which he didn't do there. Right. So, very, very beautiful. Any wall fort. rubbers in chat? <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, the damage boost is intentional. Uh, you don't want to have the tail in Mario 3 when you're playing through these stages because once you build P-Speed and jump in the air, it locks you in the P-Speed. However, it also locks you in the ending P-Speed at a particular number of frames after you build it. So um, here he's again taking this intentional damage because this is going to make the wall jump he's going to do in the next stage a lot easier. Um, as, as small Mario, you get... Um, you know, on your retries, you get a lot more opportunities in order to do the wall jump here. So that's why he takes the damage boost. Oh! And he gets it first try. I feel like you always yeah! get it first try in these runs on GDQ. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! Right on. <laughs> so yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very, that's, you know, he might go an entire stream and that doesn't work. So... Um, it happens all the time, and yeah, it's great that it worked there. Everything's kind of just lining up really well here. I, I like the way this is going. This stage, it's it, you basically just don't want to slow down, and those carpets don't really get in your way. We call them the, the boo carpets. <laughs> the yeah, yeah, sorry. Do you know what they're I should called? Just, what's that? What are they? Do you know actually? What, do you know what they're called? No. Because they're called stretch. <laughs> oh. What? Blue carpet's way better. Uh, yeah, right. Blue carpet, blue. Blue carpet, blue. blue curtain. Yeah, stretch is just weird, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, just because he didn't slow down, it makes getting past those very simple because you always meet them when they're on a cycle where they're not up when you first spawn them. So, um, and this airship is where we get into the subpixel part of the conversation. So, Ooh. What is a subpixel? Well, you guys know what a pixel is, right? So it's like the the individual like dot on the screen where you can physically see some sort of representation of an object, right? So like Mario, like the tip of Mario's foot could be a pixel. That's not Mario's actual position. There is a position of Mario that's within that that we can't see. It's almost like if you took a microscope at the game and you zoomed in, and you can see his position further. That's what a subpixel is. So in Mario 3, there are 16, and we arbitrarily number them 0 to 15, where 0 is the farthest left part of the pixel, and 15 is the farthest right part of the pixel. At the end of this airship, he's going to do a manipulation of the boss fight that gives him the farthest right part of the spectrum on the subpixel, so it's going to be 14 or 15. And we're going to see him do movements to try to tap right and move a small amount right and then tap quickly left to try to move a small amount left to try to guarantee those high values and this will set him up for a clip in the next one and we probably have time for a donation here or two all right sounds good thank you Haxer. we have a 100 dollars donation from d-ray who says super mario brothers Ooh. 3 with the man the myth the legend mitch flower power chat let's give him a big hype all, let's all enjoy this run and see if he can break his record at an event. Let no hands happen and be cancer all here together. Thanks for everyone for this amazing week and love for everyone. Pixels, man, it's all about the pixels. <laughs> <laughs> he should pixels be set up well. Here. Can you press A, Mitch? Come on, Can you press and cheese. Come yeah, on. This is the hardest part. <laughs> it is. The right A press? Yep. And he gets it. Beautiful hey, hey, stuff. Mitch, how does that cheese taste right now? How does that mac and cheese? Mm. Is it good? Cheese, cheesy, what? cheesy goodness. What kind of cheese? <laughs> what kind of cheese? Uh, it I don't know. Any cheese. It's all, <laughs> all cheese is good. I actually really like feta. Feta cheese is pretty feta good. Feta cheese? I okay, like how it. about you, Hacksaw? I like it. Hold on. I'm in, I'm in agreement. This is annoying. Yeah. Oh my gosh, thank you. So, remember that thing I was talking about where you do these weird P-Speed builds in this game? That P-Speed that he did in this level just barely works. And you're wondering, well, why Why didn't he just fire snipe the plant? He had Fire Flower. 
you actually need to take damage on that plant to continue to build your P meter. And then he used those small hops over the gap to barely build it in time to make those jumps over the gap. So what you're saying is pixels, man. It's all about yes. the pixels. It, it is all about the pixels. You got to maximize them pixels. And, and then, of course, you know, you had two super stressful stages and then you just get this one. <laughs> Which is, I build P-Speed and run right to the end and just jump at the I correct time. <laughs> so yeah, most of World 7 is kind of like the last level we saw. There's not much meat to it, but the levels that have stuff going on are very tricky. So we get a, a couple also of... like uh, item abuse world, too. Yeah. You just abuse all the items you can. Clear that inventory out for World 8. <laughs> yeah, right? Star, <laughs> P-Wing star, cloud, cloud star. But you keep that whistle, you know. You gotta always have that whistle there. <laughs> so he's gonna do another sub-pixel manipulation oh, here. No way. I have to get no. so... I did the hard press oh, no. and I'd already moved and it's like, yeah. Oh no. I, I hope. I hope. I hope. This kind of works like 7-1. Um... Now, unfortunately, he didn't have the right subpixel there. This one's weird because the range of subpixels happens in the middle of the spectrum versus on the end, like the previous one. So if you tap a little too hard right, like he did there, he probably went over 10 because you need to be 3 to 10. So. And I'm getting very unlucky here. Yeah, every time you see his head slightly clip into that ceiling, he's just oh. not getting lucky essentially there it is we got it though we got it yep so in a normal warpless like world record attempts these are the tricks that are the bulk of the time loss they're just so precise and lots can go wrong but we got it it was good yep and i've nailed almost everything in this run so to have that just Ooh, i almost hit that music <laughs> Oh, of Move. course. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, was, that was very nice of him to recognize that he wasn't making it past that... Uh, what what the heck are those called? Patooies there? Um, the Patooies? Yeah. Unfortunately, him taking the, the damage there changed what that Patooie was going to do. So um, he just it's had a like global right. timer to it. Yeah. It's a really hard strat that he was doing there, which is why I try to be quiet. And we're going to do that again here. Very... Alright, the real stressful part of the stage is done there. Um, if you're wondering why, why is that stage stressful? I mean, look at, look at what he just did there. He, he barely has enough space to build the P-meter on those pipes and he had to snipe all those plants out of the way in order to make his way through without losing the hammer suit. So, very, very technical stage there in 7F2. We did it! We Absolutely. did it, everyone! All right, we have time for donations. All right, sounds good, and wonderful 7F2 there, Mitch. All right, we Thank have you. $150 from Icon Slim J-Rod, who says, Sky Bills, Mitch! Thank yous for the positivity. And that Michael Yama guy that hangs around y'all. You know, trying to be cool. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Much love he to y'all. Cool. We also have $150 from Sporadic Radic, who says, had to get one last donation in before the end. When I first volunteered for GDQ, I'd been in a really bad place. I wanted to make a positive difference. I'd never speed run a game, but GDQ had kept me company on the couch through several illnesses. I looked at the volunteer opportunities and I was like, host, I think I could do that one. Let's try it. Thanks to GDQ, I've met so many wonderful, kind people. Thank you so much to all the staff, runners, and volunteers for all the hard work you do to put on this amazing event. And thanks for letting me be a part of it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Also, Magus66 donates $100. Same thing. Waiting to donate for Mitch Flower Power. Go, Mitch. And Great Wani donates $5 saying, shout outs to Mitch Flower Power. Got me so deep hop ready to watch this amazing run. Also, when are we going to see SMB3 Any% percent versus Hot Pocket Part 2? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I lost. I, 
I don't, I don't think he wants powerful. a rematch. He wants to stay winner. Yeah, stay winner forever. You want to talk about, you know, welcoming runs and such, you know, I wouldn't be where I am in my Mario journey. You know, I did the shuffler last night without Mitch. Mitch taught me how to build up P-Speed and play through a lot of Mario 3 fundamentals. I say that as I slipped off the final donut into the uh, lava pit with fire power up, but you know, details. Anyway, We've Mitch all is, done that. <laughs> Mitch has yep. been nothing but welcoming, and I just want to let you know what kind of runner Mitch is. Thank you so much again, Mitch, for being a fantastic member of the community. Well, I really appreciate that. I know I have somewhat of a hard exterior, but I'm I'm soft. I'm a soft. He's like an onion. He has layers. I just feel bad for anyone who tunes into my stream for the first time on like after the Hammer Brothers have been screwing me over for like seven hours straight. I, yeah. I can get pretty grumpy, but <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm a big I'm a big softy. I'm a big softy. Oh. Uh. Hey, Mitch, so, how's your runs going? It's like, please don't ask me that right now. <laughs> Anything but that They're question. They're not going good. <laughs> yeah, so you saw at the end of World 7 there, things get real, real fast. It's like the beginning is tough, and then the end is tough. And everything in between, you kind of just fly over. And then it, the game gives you like a nice five-minute break at the beginning of World 8 as well, because, you know, why not? So... Sky, yeah, you honestly, have in a warpless run. Hold, hold on a sec. Honestly, the, oh, yeah. the hardest uh, part in a warpless run is definitely the back half of World Seven. It's just like honestly a combination of everything that you're trying to put in play right after you've just done a wall jump in World Six and potentially skipped every Hammer Brother, which takes a very long time to do. Very small amount of runs make it um, to World Seven where you haven't gotten any extra Hammer Brothers or bad luck. And then on top of that, you have the Hammer Brother movements, and have you made any mistakes in any levels, right? So it's essentially, you know, a pileup of Hammer Brother movements, extra Hammer Brothers, a wall jump, and then World 7 with the two clips, the amazing Hammer Suit strats, and like keeping it together. And we're not even at the hands yet. <laughs> you can do all of that and then get pulled in by the hands. So yeah, the end of World 7 is the highest stress because most runners are just hoping that they play good enough, get lucky enough to even see the hands. And that's... Oof. That's the challenge of Mario 3 right there. But that's why I love it. That's why I think it's it's amazing. It's got incredible replay value. I mean, I've been speedrunning here for this long. I say this all the time. I still have not hit my full potential. It's got the 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 RNG is bad, but also good. It keeps it alive. Yeah, and the uh... <laughs> I was confused there. I'm like, you don't normally do that. Yeah, don't, don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was talking to I was it was in the middle of my story. I know. Let people know how how awesome Mario Three hey, is. Hey, hey, man, I was just hoping you weren't gonna take damage. You know, just relaxing on the auto scroller. <laughs> the, the, the cardinal sin there of Mario Three. Um, yeah, don't but, ever, don't even think about doing anything you you're not used to or have never done before in the middle of a run. It's just bad news. <laughs> Stick to the guts. Um. Yeah, and he mentioned the hands, and things get real fast in Mario 3 after the hands. You get the hardest, probably the hardest auto-scroller in the run immediately after. And then after, you know, relaxing for five or six minutes, waiting for the next level where you actually do something, 8-1 happens, and, you know. Well, Haxer is probably the most lucky person crossing the hands that I've ever <laughs> witnessed. So I'm actually going to give him all the power and i don't want a biased answer should i bump across the hand taxer or should i normally cross them it's up to you listen you choose I, you choose i would just wouldn't do what i do i normally just cross them and it never works so you know whatever works man <laughs> whatever gets you there i want you here's what i want you to do mitch i want you to cross them and not get pulled in by any yeah exactly <laughs> just what i would do don't do that <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> do we have time oh, for a yeah. quick donation? Absolutely. Uh, yep. Yes. All right, we have a ten thousand dollar donation from one and only Fan Gamer. 
who says, Whoa. Hey everybody, Fan Gamer here. One last time for AGDQ 2023. It has once again been an honor for Fan Gamer to partner with Games Done Quick to create a charity focused merch collection that benefits Prevent Cancer Foundation. Thanks to everyone who has made a purchase this week, and we've been able to raise $90,000 and counting, helping that donation total rise. Thank you to all GDQ staff and volunteers, to all the runners and commentators, to the sponsors, and everyone who made a donation. Thank you to all of you for making AGDQ 2023 possible, and a special thank you to Mike. Yama for all the work you've put into making GDQ what it is today. Good luck on your future endeavors. We look forward to seeing everyone again soon at the next event. Thank you so much, Fangamer. So Mitch getting two hands here. These three stages, he could have skipped all of them, but unfortunately the game was not going to allow him to do that today. So... I just want to point out that Haxer got two hands. Like I said, I put all the responsibility <laughs> in his hands. So he, he got about typical RNG right yep. now. This looks like Haxer's, yep. Haxer's lifestyle here. One or two, right? Standard. <clears throat> That's just bonus content, Mitch, right there. You know? That's, That's right. extra Mario 3. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you guys know these levels existed? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever seen them before. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, this this stage can get, you know, away from you really fast. Mitch, you can tell he's played a lot, right? You can always tell when someone's really comfortable with an auto scroller, just how they, they use the screen scroll like he's doing here to stay ahead of the screen. And just, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you use this to gain, gain control over the, the wrenches, the rocky wrenches. Because yep. if they get out of control, whew, wrenches all over the place. Got wrenches flying everywhere. Some of them spawn, some of them don't. <laughs> uh, so for anyone curious in chat, each hand is roughly 20 seconds. So in a normal warpless run, that would have cost me 40 seconds going up against a run that got no hands. So if you got a PB with two hands or, or no hands, then you want to be 40 seconds ahead. Yeah, we've got a, a really notorious level here, I would say, 8-1. Nothing's ever gone wrong in this level in the history of Mario. <laughs> and he has there's had a never very been beautiful... A 109, <laughs> there's never been a 109 refused by this level, yeah. ever. <laughs> True. <laughs> Rip Guru, yeah. yeah, exactly. No, no, say it. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Um, he's, got, but... he's got a one-up clip named after him. Yep. But thankfully, there with the hammer suit, building that early P speeds. Oh real. no way! Wow, I even did a hard turn back. You there. did. That's crazy. That okay. That so happens. small that Mario, happens. I have to take this. Why not? Yeah, you could. Why not? Um, that <laughs> is. Oh man, look at the size of that turn back I did too. That's really rare. Somehow you just had a lot of speed still, and there wasn't much you could yeah. do there. Maybe I did like one of those deflated turnbacks where like you press left but like you let go, so you like you're fading backwards. Yeah. If you know what I mean, like instead of holding left. Yeah. I mean that. But that's that okay we... because we have to do the fortress, so it works out okay. Yeah, you know, he can re-get his fire here. It's not a big deal. That's that's like a classic mistake. Like you see that pretty commonly. I, you know, it's not like super yeah. common, but like that's. If if he's gonna make a mistake, you yeah you can, you'll see that one every once in a while. The funny thing is, like anytime I enter seven two with hammer suit, like that's the mistake. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Yep, exactly. Fire is so much more comfy because you just go over the blocks. You know, even if you yeah, take you damage, take yeah, you don't worry yeah, about uh, it. So it's so pog when you get the hammer suit because you go up the hill with the triple snipes. Yep. So unfortunately, Bam -bam. not. <laughs> not gonna see the hammer suit there. He did get early P speed in this fourth though, which is really nice. Nice like half-ish second or so. Um, getting that. This early has been there. an incredibly uh, solid run. And for anyone yeah. who doesn't know, uh, the last official, and I think I mentioned this in the interview, uh, the last official warpless run that I did at GDQ was 2015. So if I want to get a GDQ PB, I have to beat a 53 something something. All I know is it's a 53. So. If we do that, we've made progress. Yeah, I'm thinking this run should be there, right? I don't know. You right, you would yeah. know. You have you have the timer. <laughs> do 
you think do you think speedruns.com can have like a GDQ listing like all your PBs and yeah. <laughs> you try to world record on yourself for like GDQ true. runs? True, true. Like all the best times that have ever been done in the game in a category. Yeah, try and beat me at GDQ, bro. Like you have to like get <laughs> accepted and everything. Yeah. It's just such a hard process. <laughs> The guy who has the record just doesn't doesn't ever submit races, and he's just like, "Oh, good luck, good luck beating my time." Yep. Yeah, you'll never beat it. <laughs> All right, so we are nearing the end. So sad. Yep, but we get a pretty nice level to send it off. You know, Bowser's Castle is uh, it's it's uh, I think it's a good level. I like it. Borzer is is his nickname Borzer. Borzer, yeah. Get out of here, Borzer. <laughs> <laughs> what are the mushrooms here? Like, what? Like, the, the background <laughs> I don't, is so weird. I don't know. I don't know where they found those. Oh, skipping the clip. <laughs> Yo, can you skip? <laughs> Yo, the mic skip? Yo, here we go. One up clip. Standard right there. Yep, Doesn't get denied. Yep. <laughs> And going for the peace beer in the statue room is pretty tricky. So um, you definitely need that duck input because you don't want to end up in the lava. Now Bowser is going to take 35 fireballs in order to end this pattern. Is thanks Bowser. Anyway, beautiful kill I don't know there. If you guys have seen my uh, my warpless run, but I now know there's a fireball at the end there. I didn't know that before. <laughs> I thought I was playing randomizer with the 50 10. Yeah. All right, so time as soon as I go in the door. And time. We saved! We saved her. Peach is paved. <laughs> yeah, great run, man. Just, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Great comms. Honestly, yeah, great thank comms. You. Thank, thank you. you so much uh, for coming out here and doing the comms for me. Um, there's definitely a lot of places where I can't I can't talk and I can't keep up with uh, you know the talking and playing at the same time and uh, thank you very much I really appreciate it guys yeah, give absolutely. it up for Hexer for the comms give it up for Sky for the donations let's go we thank have you. time for a donation if you want it's just the credits sure absolutely five dollars from Maddie J who says what a GDQ and what a way to end it with the man whose speedruns fill my mornings Mitch Flower Power in the GDQ finale is oh so deserved and earned. Uh, four minutes. All right. Uh, we have time. We have time probably for one or two more, and then we can, uh, you know, you know what's next. Oh, we know what's next. I know. And this time, I promise to not overwhelm y'all's ears, Tim. All right. So, uh, Barry Man donates one hundred dollars, saying this game has to be one of my most favorite games of all time, and was a huge part of my childhood. You've got this, Mitch. Dominate this run in a way that only you can. We've already raised so much this week, so let's finish strong, everyone. For anyone who still has enough to do, let's get a $100 hype train going so we can together stomp out Cancer for Good finale hype. Woo! That's right. You guys have five or six more minutes of Mario 3, and that's it. So you get them in while you can. That's right, and it's probably probably the last time you did the the uh, wrong where might have been at GDQ even. That's correct. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was actually the same uh same thing. I did a warpless run, and then I did uh the uh the wrong warp. I was I wanted to say no wrong warp. I'm just like I'm so used to that. But yeah, the. the uh, <laughs> The any percent run. Um, so for those of you who don't know what's going to happen, I'm going to set up a series of uh, random, you know, what appears to be random things in 7-1, uh, but they're going to be like super precise and I'm going to like kind of trick the code into sending me somewhere once I uh, trigger something in a very glitched area. And uh, I'm giving a very mild explanation of this. It's super deep and detailed. It is. We don't need to worry about all of that. Uh, we just need to know that weird things happen and Mario gets sent places he doesn't think he is and it's good places. And flip, to getting sent to good places. <laughs> and flip a coin as to whether you get sent there, basically. <laughs> yes, I might have to flip a coin here. Um, so uh, I can actually give a countdown this time. So we're going to go on. We're going to go and go starting from three. Three, two, one, go. All right. It's going to be a little different from Warpless. I don't need. You know what? I'm actually going to do like early hammer strats. 
Because like this level, this level has been like the same for me for like the last you, like, two years. Yeah, Actually, you're used you know to what? it. No, we can we can do it. Yeah, look at that. See, we can do it. We're learning on the fly. Beautiful. Honestly, I'm not kidding, everyone. I have not done a level like that in a year <laughs> because I'm right. only focused on early hammer manipulation. But do you remember <laughs> one too? <laughs> I will try. <laughs> yeah, don't duck jump. Don't de-lag in this category. Yep. Very beautiful build I there. Want the I want to. I want to, though. <laughs> the duck I jump just know. came <laughs> out. Yeah, the, the out of flames, yeah. I couldn't yeah. help it. I couldn't help it. That's, that's so what manipulation. We're right now is, yeah, so what we're laughing at right now is like you focus on one category for so long that to do the levels different in a different category, like it's so hard to get your muscle memory uh, shaped around it, but we did it. Like this level, for example, unless I'm doing 100%, I'm never doing this level, but we've done it for long enough. Go ahead. Fall through. Whoa, did you know there's like a, a secret? Is there a secret? Secret? Is there Skikrik? Skikrik? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I say it like that. Okay. So we got the secret warp whistle that we learned about from the wizard. And now we have the fortune. My favorite part about that mushroom house has always been how Toad is just like, yeah, you should use this item, by the way. Just use it. Okay. Yeah, one Thanks, two, Toad. Bro. <laughs> Thanks, Toad. All right. So now we have the two warp whistles. We're gonna warp to world world two first. Yeah, please go to world two first. Very important. Yeah, you don't want to double up here. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna be quickly changing it to a no wrong warp run. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, all just right. just so y'all know, he's got to enter world two there so he can get on this row versus if he used it again in the warp zone there, it sends him to 8 instead. So yeah, All he's right, got it. That is strange, strangely vital to what I'm trying to do. Yeah, and then he's got to take out these plants as well. Um, and then this part of the level, he's got to line up the shells in particular, uh, on particular pixels here. So this is all this is all intentional. He needs this shell as well. This one's a little tricky, because this one stays alive. So it's sometimes hard to tell when it's the right pixel or, or too far in a direction. And he's gonna want a damage boost right. here. And Looks like everything else in Mario 3, welcome to RNG land. <laughs> yep, flip I, a coin. I hope the turtle doesn't move. Or maybe in the actual game, you do Ooh. a point. He didn't move. Didn't move. It's supposed to be a good Ooh. sign. Ooh, first try. Let's go. Look at that. So yeah, that's not you the way you're supposed to enter the pipe, by the way. Yeah. You did that wrong. <laughs> that's why it's the wrong <laughs> yeah, one. Don't if you don't do what I just did, don't go in that pipe. It's not gonna take you. <laughs> yeah. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Let's see. Did we save the princess? We saved the princess. Let's, Let's go. go. Awesome. Yeah. Right on. I saved her twice, by the way. So This run was much faster than the last one. Why didn't you just do it this way? Yeah, why did you play for 50 minutes when you could play <laughs> for four? But yeah, it's it's one of these. It's very technical at this point in that category. They You can do exactly what Mitch did there, and it just won't work for no reason. Yeah. There's no, like, no The only reason. thing that didn't work today was the early hammer manipulation, which I don't blame it. I don't blame it. So that was uh, pretty good. I'm, I am I will definitely not walk away today thinking I didn't perform the way I wanted to. I actually clean sweeped, I think, like, five worlds without a mistake um, during my run. And that's that's something that happens. Um, a lot of speedrunners will probably understand what I'm saying. And it's like, you get in these, like, bursts of momentum when playing a game that no matter the RNG or anything, you just nail trick after trick after trick and uh yeah luckily i had that little boost during this run um because mario 3 can be a disaster yeah i think that's it great runs man glad to see that this one worked because i was worried about this one more than the other one i knew you'd do great on the other <laughs> right, one right gdq had me doing fire strats but we won't go into that <laughs> um yeah i just want to say thank you very much uh, for having me it is an incredible 
insane honor to have me as the closer. I never would have thought I would have been a closer for GDQ. And like, I super, super appreciate it. And Mike, we're gonna miss you so much. You were by far the perfect person uh, for GDQ, the creation and everything. And I just, it is an absolute pleasure to do this uh, with you in whatever ways that we did it. It was just amazing. I'm not good at this, but thank you so much. Um, I know you mentioned before that, you know, it, it helped drive your career, but GDQ has helped drive other people's careers as well. And that is including mine. So I owe you so much. So thank you everyone. And that's it. I'm done. Hope you guys enjoyed Super Mario Brothers 3. Let's go. Hi everyone. <laughs>